we are going to be talking about solving systems by substitution. And I'm going to tell you this is a method that you're going to use when you are in this specific situation. There are a few specific situations that you need to be. Then you're going to use this method and it'll work out for you. Otherwise, you're going to want to use some other method. You're going to use, want to use graphing. You're going to want to use um, or use a calculator, those type of ideas. Now, for solving systems, this is when you're going to want to use it. Use it when the following cases are present. If you have y equals to something, and that's like y sub 1 equal to something, and you have y sub 2 equal to something, what you'll do is you'll set y sub 1 equal to y sub 2. That is an equal sign. So you'll want to set y sub 1 equal to y sub 2, and it could be... This could be like a 2x plus 4, and that could be a negative x plus 3. And you say, all right, y1 is a 2x plus 4. y2 is a negative x plus 3. And you'll set that up. This is basically the first thing that you'll do. The second thing that you'll do is set the x's equal to each other because what we want is an equation where um, we just have one variable that we're looking for. You'll get your x's on one side and your y's on the other. So the first thing I'll do is I'll add an x to both sides using my reflexive property. I'll get a 3x what, plus what? 4 is equal to 3. Subtract the 4 from both sides. And get 3x is equal to negative 1, then I'll divide by 3 and get x is equal to negative 1 third. So I know my point is going to be negative 1 third comma something. So which equation do you think we're going to want to use? Are we going to want to use y is equal to 2x plus 4 or y is equal to negative x plus 3? Okay, let's use 2x plus 4. So if I use y is equal to 2x plus 4, and I know my x is equal to negative 1 third, I'll say y is equal to 2 times negative 1 third plus 4. You can't be afraid to deal with fractions because fractions are a way of life. They're just a number. 2 times negative 1 third a whole number times a fraction, two times the numerator. So I'm going to get a negative two-thirds plus four. So can I add those as they are? No. Because one's a fraction, one's a whole number, I can only add them if they're all fractions. And the fractions have to have the same denominator. So I'm going to take that four and say it's really four over one times something is going to get me to a fraction with a denominator of 3. So I have to take 1 times something to get to 3. What am I going to multiply that 1 times? 1 times 3 is going to get me to 3, so that tells me exactly what's going to be in the top, which is a 3, because what am I really multiplying by? What's 3 over 3? 1. So is that changing the value of 4? No. So I get 12 times 3 is, or excuse me, 4 times 3 is 12. And so now I get y is equal to negative 2 thirds plus 12 thirds. So what's negative 2 over 3? Add that to 12 thirds. Negative 2 plus 12 is, that's 10 thirds. So... 
that is all for one problem. Yeah, that's exactly what you'd have to do. You'd have to solve for X and then solve for Y and get that point right there. Questions, yes. Where did I get the 12 over 3 from? What was that? Yes, because I had to take 4 over 1 times 3 over 3 in order to make it into a fraction so I could add these two fractions together. If it was 3 over 3, that would be equal to 1. And But we're adding 4. So in order to make 4 into an equivalent fraction with the denominator of 3, we multiply it by 1, which is just 3 over 3, and that's equal to 12 over 3. And so now 12 over 3 is still 4, so we're still adding the 4 to it. We're just adding it in a different form that we can actually add our fractions together. So one of the complaints I just heard is I have to do all this work. Trust me, this is not a lot of work. This is nothing. Well, yeah, you'll have to. You have to do every piece of, every work, every step, everything it up that you have to put down there. I've had math problems that have taken up 10 to 12 pages. Alright, now here's another situation where substitution will work out good for you. This, this situation is when like y equals 2, where you already know the value for the y is a 2, and you're going to get the value, or you're going to use another equation, you've got to figure out where they're going to intersect at. Well, the nice thing from here is I know the point value, or the, the coordinates rather, are going to have a 2 as the y coordinate. Because y equals 2 always has a y coordinate of 2. So I know for a fact that that first one is going to be there. So now all I have to do is find x. I'm still going to do a substitution because I know what y is equal to. So I'm going to take this y and have that equal to 2 is equal to 2x plus 4. And now i got to solve for x. So, what am I going to do in this case? Subtract 4 from both sides. 2 minus 4 is a negative 2, which is equal to 2x. Divide that by 2. Divide that by 2. What do I get for my x value? What's negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. So I know this answer is a negative 1. That one works out a little bit nicer. So that's just a different situation. That works out pretty good for this situation. Now another one would be like if you have y is equal to 3x plus 1 and you have 2x plus y is equal to 6. And in this case, you have y here and you have y here. What can we do? Let's stay focused, please. What can we do? I can take this value of 3x plus 1 and substitute it in for my y value. Because I know, remember, if we're looking for that point of intersection, 
it's a y and an x value. That y works in both equations. It's the same value in both equations. That x works in both equations. That same thing for both equations. Yeah, that was x and y. I put y and x. It happens. No big deal. So I'm going to get 2x plus... the 3x plus 1, which is my y value. So that was my y value. So that's why we want to do the substitution. And we only want to do substitution when substitution is an easy way of going about doing it. Where we don't have to do a lot of manipulation up front in order to get there. So now, let's simplify the left-hand side. What's 2x plus 3x? That's 5x plus 1 is equal to 6. I, need f I don't want 5x plus 1. I want x. So the first thing I have to do is subtract a 1. What do I get? 5x is equal to 5. Divide by 5. Divide by 5. x is equal to 1. So I know the point of intersection is going to be 1 comma something. I'm going to use the first equation, y is equal to 3x plus 1. And I know x is 1, so I'm going to say y is equal to 3 times the 1 plus 1. So y is equal to, what's 3 times 1? 3 plus 1, which is equal to 4. So my solution is the point 1, 4. So there are three more examples on what you need to be able to do.